Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I'm now answering question number eight, part B, from this February March 2020 IGCSE Cambridge paper four from the 0580 syllabus. This is paper four, variant two. Uh, this question here is about three-dimensional trigonometry and they've told us about this diagram which shows an open box so that it's open at the top A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H in the shape of a cuboid so it's a cuboid shape so all of these faces are rectangles basically so we have to keep that in mind it says A, B is 20 centimeters and B, C is 18 centimeters and A, E is 16 centimeters as shown in the diagram it says there's a thin rod A, G, X, which rests partly inside the box. As you can see, that part is sticking out of the box. The rod is 40 centimeters long. So that means from A to X, the length from A to X is 40 centimeters. Okay, the whole length is, eight, is 40 centimeters. It says calculate G, X, the length of the rod which is outside the box. So we need to find this part, this length here. Let me call this L. We need to find this length here which is the part that's sticking outside the box. So just having a quick glance at this, we can see that GX is going to be the whole thing, AX, take away the part that's inside the box, which is AG. So if I find what AG is, because I know this already is 40, that's what we have to focus on. How do we find from the length from A to G? If I find A to G, subtract it from 40, I've got what I need for part one of this question. So that's what we need to do. So I've got a little copy of the diagram down here so we can focus on it and look instead sort of going up and down the page. So we need to find the length AG. Now what we have to remember, this is a cuboid. In a cuboid, all the faces are rectangles. Okay, and if I think about this length AG, it's like diagonally going across from one end of the box to the other. So if I make a line going from A all the way to... Um, C from A to C okay if I make a line like that from A to C let me make that a bit more clearer it's from A to C okay now that line from A to C is going to form a right angle triangle A C G okay uh, it's a right angle triangle why because this is the wall of the cuboid and this is the floor of the cuboid and they meet at right angles if you look at your room for example in the corner of the room the floor and the wall they are at right angles it doesn't look like it because this is a i mean in the diagram here why because it's a 3d diagram so the the triangle acg will be something like this if you're looking at it from the side supposing you're looking at it from you know this kind of perspective if you're looking at as if you're looking in this direction here supposing you're looking at this you know, this is your eye and you're looking at this from that direction, you will see this in front of you, where that would be a right angle. That's A, and that's C, and that's G. Okay, let me just put that big. I put, they both look like Gs. A, and that's C, and that's G. That's better. Okay, and now what do we know in this well, I know that this is 16, and therefore this is also 16. Why? Because it's the height of the cuboid. So this is 16 centimeters here. Now, that's all we know. We don't know AC. We don't know AG, of course. We're trying to find it. Um, so that's all we know in this diagram. So that's not enough for us to find AG by itself. However, if I look, supposing I'm looking at this from above, I'm looking down from above, this base here, this is going to be a right angle triangle again why because this is a rectangular base so you know all the faces are right angle so this is going to be a right angle here if you're looking straight down so you're going to have another right angle triangle which is abc so you have a and then b and then c of course i'm not drawing them to any scale here just just drawing a right angle triangle so this is the right angle this is where b is this is where a is and this is where c is abc a, B, C. That's a right angle. Now, I know this is 20. I know this is 18 centimeters. And from this, I can find AC. And this AC is the same as that AC. If I find what this is, I can then find AG. So I know that AC is going to be equal to the square root of, because using Pythagoras' theorem in this right angle triangle, 
the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides and that, that's the hypotenuse so I'm fine I have to add the square of these two sides together and find the square root of that so AC is going to be the square root of I'll leave it in this form 20 squared plus 18 squared okay so I'm going to leave it um, writing square root because um, I'm going to have to square it again in the next part of the question so I'll just I'll just put 20 squared I won't put the square root 20 squared plus 18 squared that gives me 724. So AC is the square root of 724. I'm not going to find out what it is. I'm going to leave it in that form. Now I need, so I know that this now is the square root of 724. Now I can find what AG is. I know that AG is equal to the square root of, it's the square of 16, which is 16 squared, plus the square of root 724, which is 724. Okay, that's why I didn't bother writing it square root because it's going to be 724 when you square it again. So AG is going to be equal to the square root of, so I'm going to take this value and add to it, add to it 16 squared. That gives me the square root of 980. Okay, and that means I found AG and as we mentioned in the beginning, GX, GX is AX minus AG. It's the total length which is 40 minus AG. So we know the total length from the top to the bottom of this Okay, the total length from the top to the bottom of this from A to X, we know that length is 40. Okay, and we know now that the length of this from A to G is the square root of 980. That's the square root of 980. So what we're looking for here is going to be 40 minus the square root of 980. So AG is, uh, A, uh, sorry, GX will be 40 minus the square root of 980 and that will give us our answer so we take this value we find the square root of this and we subtract from it or we subtract it from 40 sorry we do that again 40 minus the square root of 980 980 careful okay and that gives us our answer which will give us 8.6950 8.6950 and as I mentioned it's a length it's not an exact length we have to round it to 3SF so how do we round that it's 8.69 well this 9 becomes a 10 you can't of course write 10 here so you have to write 8.7 and you must write the 0 there because it's written to three significant figures and this is in the place of the third significant figure so you must write a 0 even if it's a zero as a last number in the decimal, normally you don't write it. I wouldn't normally write 8.70, but because the zero is in the place of the, the position to which we have to round this value, you should write the zero. You have to write the zero there. So it's 8.70. So there's part one of this question number eight, part B. Now I'm going to do part um, two. Now part two is telling us to find the angle that the rod makes with the base of the box. So I'm just going to get rid of um, some of this for now. Just so we can see what's going on. All right. So this rod makes an angle with the base of the box. And I've already drawn the line that we need actually here. Okay. Because if you imagine that there's a light shining, you know, like we're finding the angle between this line and the plane ABCD, basically. The base is ABCD. So we're going to find the, the, the angle between this line and this plane. So you have to think about if you were to shine a light between the line and that plane, okay, between the line and that plane, a light that's like perpendicular to that plane, where would the shadow of that line fall? The shadow of this line would fall on this plane from A up to C, okay? And that's the angle you have to find, the angle between the line and the plane. That's the angle you have to find. You can also think about it if you were to drop this rod, okay and let go of it and if it was able to fall freely okay it would fall exactly between a along it would fall along ac that's where it would fall okay so the angle between the line and where it falls is the angle between the line and the plane so this angle i'm going to call it theta that's the angle we have to find we have to find the angle theta which is the angle g a c so again, we can use this, we can use this triangle here. So I'm going to call this angle theta. That's GAC. So we can see that 
to find theta, we have the it's a right angle triangle, we have the opposite, we have the adjacent, so we can use tangent. We can say the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite, which is 16, over the, adja of the, over the adjacent, which is the square root of 724. So theta will be the inverse tan, because we're trying to find an angle, so we put, put inverse tan of 16 over the square root of 724, and that will give us our answer. So theta is equal to, so we have inverse tan of 16 over the square root of 724. And that equals 30.737, 30.737 degrees. Now, um, we have to round angles to one decimal place. Okay, if we go back to the um first page okay it mentions in the first page that give non-exact numerical answers correct to three significant figures or one decimal place for angles in degrees okay so normally it's three significant figures as we did for the length if it's not exact but for degrees it's one decimal place okay so we have to keep that in in mind okay so this answer should be written as 30 30.7 degrees in this case it doesn't really make a difference one decimal place and 3sf are the same in this case okay the first decimal place is the third significant figure but for example if the answer came out as say it came out as 3.0737 i uh, suppose that was the answer okay then one decimal place you'd write 3.1 degrees or if it was 307.37 one decimal place would be 307.4 degrees so there's a difference Okay, from 3SF, if it's in this case. Okay, the 3SF would be 3.07. Here, 3SF would be 307. Okay, but if it's an angle, you have to write it to one decimal place unless otherwise stated, if it's not an exact value. Okay, so that's just, uh, you know, in case something like that does come up. Anyway, so there we have the answer to part two. And that concludes this question, um, question number eight, part B. Eight, part A, and the rest of this paper um, you can find the answers in the playlist which will appear somewhere over here that's a playlist for this paper you click on the link here it will take you to the playlist for this particular paper and other questions involving three-dimensional trigonometry can be found in the playlist that will appear in this region over here click on that link you'll find that and you can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link if you like to see AS and A2 material then go to the description of the video and you can find some material there or some links there that will take you to that as well. Thank you for watching and see you soon.